All right, guys, next exercise is the assembler. Uh, the assembler is a preset scene from Factor.io. So if I go here to File and Open, and I go to Scenes, uh, it's this guy right here. So it's a preset scene that you can open up and then program to do um, the entire sequence. Not only are we going to do this guy in automatic mode, we're going to do this in manual mode, and we're going to do sequential programming. Uh, so sequential programming is something where you you can set, set this up for auto or manual so here you can see here on my control panel let me just zoom in here i have an auto manual switch here and you can see that i've incorporated it into my program so when i hit this switch it changes the state of that input there and so in manual mode i'm going to hit this start push button but the start push button has a one shot so every time i hit the the push button it does the next sequence in the order of operations so just to show you that, um, I'll hit this push button and it'll start the sequence here. Then I hit the, the push button again and there's the next sequence, then the next step, then the next step, and following on. Okay, at any point I should be able to hit the reset and bring everything back to its rest state. Okay, I'll reset the animation here. So the way that uh, I've set this up is off of what I've learned from these guys here. So in the in the factory IO playlist, there's a number of different videos to watch. So the first one is uh, from Rajver Singh. He's got a great video here on the same assembler here. So he's labeled it uh, automation pick and place here. He's got amazing videos. If you want to learn everything you can about uh, PLCs, HMIs, uh, he's got great videos on YouTube um, and I've signed up for his Udemy courses as well. I'd highly recommend his courses on uh, Udemy. Rajver is, is an amazing teacher um, and he slowly and methodically walks you through um, how to program your Siemens PLC and he's got a number of different things on uh, other PLCs as well, as well as HMIs. I would highly recommend uh, going to see all of his, um, his videos and his Udemy courses. Um, once you've watched this, and this shows you like one of the different sequences that you could set up for the assembler, then the next one in the playlist is from Robert Parker from Ivy Tech Northeast. Robert's got some great videos here walking you through first how to set up the auto, manual, and reset. He's working in the Allen Bradley RS Logics, um, but you can take this and then bring it into your Siemens TIA portal and it use his ideas to build up a decent program. Uh, I've used... Um, his teachings in order to set up my work bits, my inputs, my outputs, and then the different steps that I'd like to have my assembler go through. Great, great videos. Uh, the other guy who's awesome out there is uh, Philip House. Philip has uh, a, a playlist here uh, using a unit that's very similar to the, uh, the Festo units. And he's actually using the Siemens TIA portal here. And he first again walks you through the control panel, how to do your auto, your manual, your e-stop. Uh, he does a like a, a pre-start mode as well. Uh, and then he walks you through how to do sequential programming. He's using uh, the, the DBs here. So I, I've been using memory bits in my uh, program, but I've learned so much from, uh, from his videos. So those three guys in that Rajver Singh, Robert Parker, and uh, Philip House, amazing, amazing uh, guys, amazing teachers. Um, if you guys have other videos or places that uh, describe how to do sequential programming in ladder logic then share them below in the comments so that all of us can learn from them okay so let's go back to the the animation here and again similar to those guys i have now set up my inputs my outputs uh, my different steps that i'd like to sequence through so on my steps here if we just open this guy up i think i have like 18 different steps in order to get the entire sequence of the assembler to go through all the way to the point where um, I've got the cycle complete and then it starts the cycle once again. Every time that uh, I hit the start push button, I provide myself with a one shot there. Uh, so you can see the one shot here and again down here and every different step makes use of the one shot. So that one shot is over here in my work bits. And if I open up my work bits here, I've got a number of different portions here. So I've got my auto manual mode here. So if I hit this guy, 
and then change my auto and manual mode you can see that those guys are changing state uh, i've got a reset mode so that every time that i hit the reset it takes a second to reset everything and bring every actuator back to the home position um, then if i scroll down here i've got the the sequence of units or positions that will provide me with the home position and then I've got my start push, start push button one shot in that every time that I hit this push button, it provides me with a one shot output. So just one output every time I hit the start push button. Okay, so let me show you how this guy works. And this is really hard to do. I found this really difficult to do in getting uh, every different sequence uh, to work every time you hit the, the push button. But let me show you what I've got so far. So I've got two units here. I've got a lid and I've got a base here. And every time that I hit this push button, it's going to sequence these guys through the entire sequence of events. I'm going to hit the reset one more time, just to make sure everything's cool. Uh, the animation is set, so I'll hit this push button. And first, I'm having the lid and the base advance. There are two diffuse sensors that see that those guys are have come through. The next thing I need to do is clamp the lid. Okay. Once I've clamped the lid, then the next sequence is to clamp the base. Then I've decided that once those guys are both clamped, then I'm going to extend the Z axis here. Okay. Now that I've got that there and I can see there's a <clears throat> there's a sensor there. I don't know if you can see it. it. Says that the item is detected. So that's true now. So once that guy is true, let me go back to this position here. Then I should be able to turn on the gripper. The gripper is just a pneumatic gripper. Okay, you can see you hear the, the air flowing now. Once that's good, then I'm going to now unclamp the lid. I'm going to retract the Z axis. Beautiful. Then I've got another axis here, the, the X axis. So I'm going to now extend that. Once that's extended, then I can then extend my Z axis once again. Excellent. Once that's in place, then I'm going to release the clamp. There we go. Okay. Once the clamp is released on the on the base, then I'm going to retract the Z axis. Okay. And then I can bring my X axis back to the home position. As the X axis goes back to the home position, uh, this actuator right here, you can just make it out here, positive at limit bases. This is going to extend. The base is going to move forwards with this conveyor. This diffuse sensor, the part leaving, will pick that up. And then once it has passed the part leaving, then this positive at limit a, a blocker is going to retract. Beautiful. And then I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, that sequence there, um, or my last step, is now back at my, my first step. So if I go to my steps here, Okay, then I now have uh, my last uh, sequence there, which is, hang on, let me find it here. There we go. So I've got my cycle complete here, and that guy is resetting everything now. And as long as I'm in the home position, I should be able to now have the sequence continue now. Okay, so in order to get this guy to start back up again, um, I should be able just to hit the start push button and start the entire sequence. Once this base has gone ahead with the lid included and passed by this diffuse sensor, I've set it up so it resets the entire system. So when I hit this push button, it should advance each of these guys up to these limits here. There we go. Excellent. And what you'll see is um, when this advances on the next uh, unit, it will disappear uh, right down here. Okay, so... Um, I believe this is called the collector. So the emitter is here and the collector is here. So let's just see if we can zoom in here, get everything in there. Maybe if we move our... There we go. Beautiful. Okay. And so we'll just keep hitting the, the push button and we'll see the sequence keep going. So we'll clamp the, uh, the lid now. Then the base. There we go. Is that axis? We have the the viewing of the actual unit there. Turn on the clamp. There we go. Extend the X. Extend the Z. Beautiful. Let go with the gripper. There we go. 
let go with the base clamp. There we go. And again, this will advance and you'll see that this goes down to the collector and disappears. Gorgeous, right on. Okay, so now we've set up a, a circuit where we've got automatic control um, and we're able to sequence through each and every step that we're trying to get through. Uh, the next step would be to make this into automatic mode so that once we switch this guy into automatic, then all of a sudden the entire sequence starts up and keeps rock and rolling until we hit the stop push button. All right, guys, we'll stop her there. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video. Um, if you liked it, then hit the like button or subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks again. See you soon.